What's up y'all, welcome back. I am deranged today. I don't know if that's gonna be any different from my typical content, but I have had so much caffeine and that was like a long time ago and I'm still just like kind of on one. So what did I do today? I hunted down a YSL quad, okay? I told y'all, sometimes this is for sale, most of the time it's for sale. I end up doing a deep dive on a brand, right? And I was like, this year I'm not gonna do it. Dare to do, yes I did. So I have gotten a bunch of stuff from YSL and in order to make this video like the most useful because I got literally one comment from someone being like I'm really interested in your opinion on those quads. I was like all right let's go. I went ahead and also followed through and did that. So I have the YSL new tint here. I got this in the shade new one. It's very light. We're just gonna make do. Figure it out. I got another one of the YSL New Lip and Cheek Balmy Tints. This one's in New Pinch. Look at her. Look at that muted coral. We love to see it. I got a new lipstick. Some of y'all have probably seen this in the reel that I put up where I used that Lady Gaga song, sped up Lady Gaga song from Wednesday. Either way. I mean, it was the, the Wednesday dance. I don't think it was actually in Wednesday, but regardless. I got the Rouge Pure Couture The Bold lipstick, which is different than the Rouge Pure Couture which is new, I think. But I got this in shade 13 and it is ridiculous. It's so beautiful. Like all the stuff I've used already except for the eyeshadow palette. They sent me these two things. So YSL sends me something every month. I'm kind of in their little club, right? And I enjoy making the content around it. It's like inspiring to me. It's always kind of a concept. They did one that was like Barbie. So it was like a bunch of pink stuff. And then they did one that was like PSL. It was like a bunch of like fall colors. And then this one is just kind of like cool, spooky, ooky kind of stuff. And so I got the Lash Clash Mascara, which Spoiler, I love. And then they sent Black Opium, which did I think that I was going to like? Snobby me, did I think I was gonna like a perfume that you could buy at Duty Free? <laughs> you know? No, I did not. I was expecting, oh my God. I was expecting it to be like super oody and woody and musky, especially, you know, being called Black Opium. I was like expecting like just the, the darkest, woodiest smells. And that's not the case, okay, Mary? It is delicious. It's fantastic. I will put the notes on the screen because I'm terrible at describing these things, but also just on a personal level, it really combines well with my personal skin chemistry. Told you, I'm on one today. Lash Clash Mascara and then the Couture Mini Clutch, which I probably said in a tepid takes at one point that I wasn't gonna buy. I don't know. I don't know, all it takes is one of y'all being like, I'd like to know, you know, and I'll do it. So I. Got this, look at her. Ooh! So we will talk about the performance of these formulas. Let's get, let's get these out of here. The main thing here being, you know, I think that this is the final boss in terms of luxury quads from luxury fashion houses, you know, that I've tried. So like, I have opinions now on Guerlain, Tom Ford, Chanel. Does Gucci have eyeshadow? quads they don't but i do i've had their the gucci eyeshadow palette givenchy which i don't think that's a quad that's a nine pan that i had but regardless i have opinions on all of their eyeshadows except for ysl so here we are we're gonna put some makeup on my face hopefully it ends up cute <laughs> Let's go have in. I don't know. Yesterday was Halloween and took my kid trick or treating for the first time ever, cause he's three. So it was like the first time that it all computed for him. And so it was just like this core memory bomb in my brain. It was just like the happiest, awesomest stuff. It was so cool. And he dressed as Max from where the wild things are. And I keep telling everyone this story. So if you know, you're in my life and I already told you the story, I apologize. By the way, this is just, it's just not the right, it's not quite the right color for me. We're going to make do here. And also not only did I dampen a beauty blender, I cleaned it. I know everybody be impressed. Anyway, these like four teenagers, you know, because when teenagers go trick-or-treating, they always have to do it in kind of a sassy, you know, way. And so it's like these four dudes, like teenage dudes, and they're all in ski masks. Okay, maybe I misspoke. Maybe that's like not that bad of a shade match. I swear I swashed it in store. So, you know, I thought that I'd done the right thing. Either way, these kids in ski masks, like four or five of them walk by and 
I'm just like, yeah, that's a freaking teenager thing to do. You know, it, like you you go dressed as something at, like actually legitimately terrifying, like someone who might mug you <laughs> kind of thing, like for Halloween. And you're on the very edge of it being okay that you're trick-or-treating kind of thing. Like, in my opinion, if you're going to be like a high schooler trick-or-treating, you need to be cosplay level dressed up, okay? Like, you need to be impressive. <laughs> there needs to be a reason that you are trick-or-treating and it is to show off your amazing creativity. This is not walk around in a ski mask carrying a pillowcase, like you're just a deadbeat at that point. But either way, these kids walk by and my kid is dressed in the Pottery Barn costume. We didn't make it, it was just the Pottery Barn Max from Where the Wild Things Are, King of All Wild Things costume. And as they're walking by, they're talking about something else and then I just hear one of them say to the other, actually that's a, that's a really sick costume. And I'm just like, yes, we are cool. We are cool with the cool kids. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. Like that looks great. That's fantastic. When I put it on for my reel that I made, I think that maybe I just put it all over my lips or something and so I was just convinced it was way too light. Like, that's fantastic. Hmm. I know the lighting's a little bit weird. It's a different time of day. And so just deal with the fact, just deal with it. No, but I mean like we're all gonna have to, me editing too. I'm just gonna have to deal with the fact that the lighting is gonna change because the sun is moving. When I film in the morning, it's usually a lot easier, a lot more predictable, it'll be like cloudy. S-O-C-K-S. So, we don't have a concealer from YSL. I just don't. I said, maybe I need to turn that down and then you can see better. And then yeah, I'll just enhance it in post, it'll be fine. So, I'm going to do what no one asked me to do and that is use the Gucci concealer because I have it. <laughs> do I recommend it? Especially as you're at this, well, you know what? 20% off at the Sephora sale, maybe. If this is something that's been interesting to you, then like, you know, now is literally the only time that I would recommend it because my only reservation about it is that it's so darned expensive for what it is. If they were going to put it in something that was a little more luxurious or if it was a little bit more remarkable of a formula, like it would be something that stuck in my short-term memory, but it just doesn't because this packaging is just kind of like neither here nor there to me. It's it's okay, but it doesn't feel any more luxurious than anything else. And the formula is good. It's good, it's just not $47 good, you know? That's all. I had that I think in 14N, right? 14N fair. Everything's looking really cute. Now granted, can I totally see what I'm doing? No, no I cannot. Does this have a scent? I never checked. And I know that with all the luxury stuff, that's the question I get. Doesn't appear to be a scent. Kind of smells like interior enamel which is fine. The Gucci does not have a scent and the YSL, I think I remember that it does. Oh no, now I don't know. I got, yes it does. I got impressions made yesterday. That's what I just reminded myself of. I had to get a new night guard because my child snapped mine in half and then stole it. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I'm gonna find it in his like bed sheets or something later. But they do this little pumpy thing, you know, and they wanna know when it's dry so that they can know when yours is dry kind of thing on the back of their hand. And you know, they apologize because it's gonna be supposedly kind of uncomfortable, right? Look at this complexion situation. It's so lightweight. Like all my freckles show through. That's really lovely, actually. How nice. And the shade match is good enough that I don't feel like I need to shellac myself. That's actually really nice. I spoke too soon on being like, that's gonna be a bad shade match. It's actually fantastic. So, wonderful, love a pleasant surprise. So anyway, I get in there and she's pushing this thing up against the top of my mouth. This is after the dentist has told me <laughs> that my jaw muscles are so overgrown that they're going to try and figure out with my insurance like if they can get Botox covered because it's so bad. Like they're like, your jaw muscles are so outrageous. Like that's the reason I have veneers and why I was able to write it off on my taxes is because I had ground my back teeth down so badly that when I went in for cosmetic veneers, they were like, no, 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 no. We gotta do your whole mind. <laughs> there's, no, there's no room. So anyway, I, I'm getting kind of, not a lecture necessarily, but they're making me very fully aware of what I already know. And that is that I'm very special in like a not super awesome way. And the fact that I grind and clench my teeth more than any human being should. While we're at it, I'm just gonna put on some bronzer here. I've got the Gucci bronzer, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna use this Sephora brush that I got because I like it, I like the shape of it. So this is the Pro Powder 50. Anyway, as this woman, the you know, the dental hygienist or assistant or whoever is pushing this impression tray up against my top teeth, you know, she in her mind is like, oh no, 
I need to make this as quick as possible. She keeps apologizing for how long the first one takes. You know, she's like, oh, this is the longest one. This is, and I swear to y'all, I could have gone to sleep. It was like someone was hugging my teeth in a way that I had not felt in so long because I'd been with, I'd like got a drugstore bite plate thing that I kind of, you know, did a temporary night guard with, but nothing like that level of pressure of just like something just so nestled into my teeth and someone applying pressure upwards. I was like, <laughs> I am so ready to go to sleep. Ah, I didn't know that I had like that particular, I don't know, inclination. I just might, if you're ever wondering how I'm doing, just feel really, really sorry for like my entire masseter situation because there's literally like grooves ground into my man mandible. Is that what that is? Mandible? I think so. From grinding my teeth so much. So. Oh, wow. I do love this Gucci bronzer. It's so blushy, you know? So let's use this new Lip and Cheek Balmy Tint. And it's been sitting in my lap, so it's kind of warm, which is nice because this is a little bit less balmy sometimes than I want it to be. I, or maybe it's just got less pigment than I want it to have. But it's like, that's the texture, right? And it doesn't look especially dewy. It also doesn't have like a ton of pigment to it. So it's like very kind of no makeup makeup sort of vibe. I don't know if it has a fragrance or if it just has like essential oils in it. I know that doesn't, I, it can't possibly have essential oils in it, but it smells, do I smell the soap that I clean my sponge with? That's possible. I use the Dom Dom soap. I mean the oil cleanser or whatever and it might have a smell. I don't know, but I'm getting something slightly herbal, an herbal refreshment, if you will. So that was another thing, by the way, I just quoted Clueless. That was, that was what that was. So I was so impressed with the costumes last night. So I, you know, we took him out trick or treating, but there's all age groups and okay. So first of all, my kid just was learning on the job in terms of like what Halloween is and how to conduct oneself. Like as soon as he learns that you take candy, first of all, he wants to eat it as he goes. That's pretty standard. I mean, like the, the whole bag concept, I think Halloween, you know, when you're looking at it from the outside is actually pretty weird. And so like, of course he thought like, okay, I have a piece of candy, I open a piece of candy, I eat a piece of candy, I get another piece of candy, I open it, I eat it kind of thing. And so like the, the bag part it took a, a second to sink in. But like when he found out that he gets free candy, he thought he got free everything. So he starts trying to like steal everybody's Halloween decorations. He's like, bones! And he's like, steal people's bones. We're like, no, no, no. Those have to stay there. And he's like, but I found bones. And you're like, no, but they're not free. They're not free and they're not for you. That's this. All you get is the candy, you know? And he's like, oh, okay. And so then I, I, we get to this little station in my neighborhood where they have glow sticks. And I introduce him to his very first glow stick by God. And I crack that thing open and I shake it and I hand it to him and he goes, That's not food. <laughs> it was awesome. I am full of core memories. But the thing that I found so heartening was just the costumes that were like vintagey from young people, from like, you know, cool teenage types. Like I saw two girls who were probably, I would say like 14, walking around as the twins from The Shining. And I was like, okay, all right, very, very cool. And then this girl who walked by who could not have been more than 10 could not have been more than 10. But as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh my God, she's Cher Horowitz. Like straight to my heart. Are you kidding me? She was in, you know, a store-bought version of the yellow Versace, like suit skirt situation. I, from the first scene, I just can't. It was so awesome. And I, I mean, she knew who she was too. I was like, is she Cher? And she turns around and looks at me and I was like, I bow down. Like, you are so cool. That movie came out in 1995. It happens to be my favorite movie. It is my Roman Empire. And so, like, this girl being so young and being, like, nailing down Cher Horowitz, I was just like, I'm relevant! <laughs> now, did these kids think that I was cool telling them that I liked their costumes? No, they did not. No, they did not. They were like, weird, weird lady. So, I think that like what I'm finding interesting about this entire line as you kind of combine it all together, at least the, like the new stuff, l look at how kind of like it makes you go no makeup makeup. It's like, you can't have any more pigment than that. Okay? Like you're not allowed to, cause it's gonna be, it's gonna be cute. Just trust the process. Like the, it doesn't matter how much you put on. It's just gonna be kind of like a natural looking amount of makeup from YSL. 
And I say that in that tone because when you think about a lot of these luxury houses, it's just drama, drama, drama. It's editorial, it's whatever. I mean, the eyeshadow is not necessarily, but like sometimes, you know, and they're usually like a fair amount of pigment or they're just like not shying away from looking like makeup. And this is like a just enough look that I could stop here, you know? And like, that's natural enough that I don't think I look like I need to compensate with a whole bunch of other makeup on my face. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, I just really like the way that it looks and those colors are great. Okay, okay, let's go into this eyeshadow palette. I really agonized y'all and by agonized I mean like, I, you know, sat there with the window open on my phone for like, I don't know, two whole minutes being like, do I go with the like warm one or do I go with the cool one? And then I remembered that the lipstick that I bought is kind of a cool tone. And so that's why I went with this. Plus this color right here looks so delicious that I just like couldn't resist. It was just my instincts were like, do that one. So this is Couture Mini Clutch 100. It has a name and I do not know what it is. I really do, oh actually it might say it on here. Stora Dolls. And that is why that did not stick in my brain because what does that mean? Someone explain that to me. I don't know what that means. So anyway, I'm gonna just watch these. Mm -hmm. I'm ruining the embossing. The embossing looks exactly like the outside packaging. They're very soft. And what appealed to me about these is that they are not, at least immediately to my eye, giving a Tom Ford quad or a lot of times a Chanel quad or something like that where they're all the same tone value. Like we have light, medium, and deep here and shimmer, which makes sense to me versus something like, you know, or a Dior Quint where you just have five colors that are just like, what am I supposed to do with that? I can't build a look. They're all medium, you know? They're all just kind of sooty and medium. And so the fact that like that is a, like four, that's a, those are four shades that I would choose kind of thing. So let's put them on my eyeballs, shall we? I'm telling you, I've been like this since I woke up this morning. I know I'm obnoxious. Like I know I'm on one, but like I've just been inflicting myself on everyone all day long. Apologize, apologize to anybody who had to see me today. I'm going to start with this lovely kind of satin shade here that's sort of the medium color and just work that into the crease what a freaking gorgeous color that is it you know what it looks like natalie it looks like oyster pearl it looks like that color from the very center pan of that byredo remembrance palette that we're always <laughs> we meaning me and natalie are always trying to dupe and also i was in store and i swatched hourglass scattered light in the shade smoke. And it also was kind of giving this color. This is maybe, we need to like name this color because it's not bedroom eyes brown. It's kind of this like, it's like a dirty blonde color. You know, it's like bedroom eyes brown for dirty blonde hair. Like it gets it, like cool tone. It's not completely cool tone though because it's not silver. It's like this pewter kind of Bambi color, right? It looks like the, I don't know, like the underside of a seal. I, I, did I just make that up? I made up the whole running of the fjords thing. So like I'm in time. I can do whatever I want. I'm just a person unchecked in a room talking to a camera. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> but I do need a name for that color, that kind of color, because we could do a whole face swatch video on just those colors. But it is giving oyster pearl. Hmm. Opulence. Okay. I'm going to then use the light one and kind of just, you know, fill in up here on both sides, this is really easy. These are not giving sooty, which I like. And then I'm actually gonna take a little more of that color and just work it onto my lid, the first color, so that we have something to, actually I'll, I'll kind of do it everywhere. Just the outer half of the lid and underneath, cause it's just really easy. Like it goes really well with my skin tone and it's really easy to work with. And then we can go in with this beautiful, this beautiful brown, same brush. I am really not feeling particularly fussy and this is not demanding that I be fussy. Now, I do have a different mindset that I go into when I think about a quad. Like a quad needs to contain an easy look. And I always thought that that was kind of intuitive. I thought that was obvious. If you're going to conceive of an eyeshadow quad, it should in and of itself, you should be able to travel with it. It shouldn't just be like four ideas <laughs> and then like you gotta just figure it out. It should be something that looks like it already has an idea of where it's supposed to go on your eyes. And I have found that maybe Charlotte Tilbury and you know, Surratt because you can make your own kind of thing. Like those are the ones that seem to like make sense to me. But like, like I said, a lot of them kind of just 
don't. And this is really making sense to me. I haven't been excited about an eyeshadow quad in a while, you know? I want, I'm just kind of testing the limits here, seeing how much drama I can build with this particular color and still get it to blend. They do blend really beautifully. Like they blend really easily. I'm gonna grab a little of the lighter shade and use it, like the medium color, and use it to kind of blend so that we're not just continuing to apply the dark one. Works great. Works as a mixing medium. This is not a Natusha to Nunu shadow. So formula wise, I think that I would compare this most closely to Surat. And what else did I compare to Surat? There was another formula that I feel like I compared to Surat. I can't remember what it was. It's probably another luxury formula, but like, the only thing I would say about this versus Surat is it's, you know, it's not quite as like creamy, but it is still creamy, but Surat is like exceptionally creamy. And also I think it's just the fact that like the Surat quad that I have is more pigmented because the colors are deeper. Whereas this is like, even though they're pigmented, the colors are just less saturated. And so like, as I apply them, all I'm getting is like the full saturation value. Like the deepest I can get is like a really nice kind of like, you know, mocha chocolate brown. I'm not gonna get black because the color's not black. That should be intuitive, but I needed to say it all out. Okay, I'm taking a brush with, uh, you know, ostensibly nothing on it and just using that to kind of blend and make sure everything's really seamless before I go in with this shimmer that I am just gagging over. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, you know what this is reminding me of? This is reminding me a little bit, just the look that I'm getting, not the formulas, but the look that I'm achieving is reminding me of the Vega palette from Lisa Eldridge. And I was also wearing this sweater when I reviewed the Vega palette. So that's probably also why, but that reminds me, I got an email earlier this week that I just saw this morning because I'm a loser. Actually, it was yesterday, so it's not that bad. Either way, I get to meet Lisa Eldridge next week. I got invited, this girl right here, this idiot on screen, just got invited to an event to go meet the Lisa Eldridge in person, okay? And like, try some, try some makeup and just, you know, <laughs> I might not come back, I might just die. <laughs> Don't, that's not a joke, that's not something to joke about, Khaki but it's going to be so epic. Like it's just gonna be, it's like the reason that I live in this part of the country is so that when someone says like, Lisa Eldridge is coming to New York City, can you come? I'm just like, Pete Davidson when Kim Kardashian's like, hey Pete, you wanna shower with me? He's like, <laughs> just like throws everything. That's me. All right, I have this adorable brush that I unearthed in my last video. This is the 210 from BK. I can't even explain to you how satisfyingly spangly that pan is to look at. It's just such a nice color. So I'm gonna go underneath my eyewood dot a little bit. This is a, this is a quad I would travel with because it's like I haven't had to think or reach for anything else, you know? And I love, love, love the look that it's giving me. Even though this time of day it's so bright in here, I like, I kind of feel like in editing, especially in 4K, I'm gonna be like, mm, cocky, <laughs> that blending wasn't quite right. <laughs> but it's okay, because we're all human beings and it's just makeup. I'm gonna take a little bit of the deepest shade there with this brush and just kind of work a soft little liner moment right there. But I am still going to put on eyeliner. I just wanted to, yeah. I just wanted to do that. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute, I love it. Okay, so that was super freaking easy. Let me do my eyeliner real quick and then we will put on the, actually there's no reason for me to like show. I'll show it to you now and then we'll zoom through. So, my good friend, Tom, Hope Mess Tom, loves this mascara. This is like their favorite mascara. So I'm so excited that I finally got to try it. So this is the Lash Clash mascara from YSL. So far, I like it. It didn't smudge and it rinsed off completely in the shower. So it's not a tubing mascara, but like it's still giving me all the satisfaction of a tubing mascara because it didn't smudge and it rinsed off completely in the shower, which is like why I wear tubing mascaras. So there you go. So I'm also going to use my new tiramisu eyeliner from Sephora because like the Sephora collection because it's a fantastic match for this look. Like it's just that nice kind of cool-ish, but like light brown. So that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that now. Watch. Why is this all 
felt like way too easy. <laughs> like this has all been way too easy. Like I feel like it's just flown by. I've been running my mouth like 90% of the time, but the makeup has not been difficult at all. And can we talk about that mascara? Okay, that is a formula of mascara that could convince me to stray from a tubing mascara because the buildability. Okay, so a tubing mascara really tops out. When you start to try and build it on itself, it does for a while, but then it starts to kind of deposit little balls on the end of your eyelashes and it can just get really frustrating as it dries down. So you kind of just go for one really big, gorgeous coat. And then that's it. This has fibers in it. And the fibers are done really, really well. I get it, Tom. I get the appeal because like, your eyelashes are just so long and they just keep getting longer and it's amazing. Like it's just like this beautiful, full, like delicious lash situation. It's very indulgent. It's very satisfying. So yeah, big fan of that. So the last thing to do here is this lipstick, right? So I'll swatch it against the other one that I got because they are different formulas, but I did buy both of these. I've just been very interested lately, I've told y'all, in luxury lipstick formulas because I feel like that's what the luxury brands do really well. Quick question. What did I do with it? There it is. Okay. <laughs> so uh, in my typical form, these are both the color of my nipples. <laughs> So here's the one that I just bought. This is the Rouge Pure Couture Bold, the Bold. And then this is, this color is Beige Trench. This is 13, I can't remember what it's called, but this is Beige Trench and just the newer uh, Rouge Couture regular one. So I think that the Bold is just more pigmented. IDK. But it's beautiful. And they, they do have a fragrance. Yeah, definitely more pigmented. Look at that shade though, good grief. Mm. It's still cream though. I don't think that I would call it a matte. I'm not sure what they call it, but my lips are chapped and not for lack of trying to keep them not chapped. I will say the fragrance is a little much. It's a little off-putting, but like when I was wearing it yesterday, it didn't bother me after a minute. It's just at first it's like, huh, okay. Like if you have a headache, it's not going to help your headache. <laughs> little clear brow gel moment. This is my Kosas. It's just my go-to because it doesn't break my eyebrows out. And you know what I'm gonna say? I just need a little more blush. That's all. And I think I'm gonna powder a little bit too, just underneath my eyes. That is not the fault of anything from YSL. I just feel like the coverage isn't exactly what I want it to be from the Gucci. It's very thin and that's fine. And it's pretty radiant, which is fine. It just kind of needs some help. A little bit more blush and we'll do contour. That's what I'm missing is, is a little bit of contour. So I'm actually gonna take this on my finger, the blush, and kind of distribute it where I want it. And I do think that like the weird thing here is that the blush is warmer than everything else and I do have a berry colored one, but like I'm just kind of low key determined to make this work. <laughs> I just don't really care. I think that mixing cool and warm is just something maybe I need to adjust my eyes to. But I'm also just really into, and the light changed so you can kind of see it a little differently now, like I'm just really into how even though yes I did every step in the routine and like the lip is even a little bit bold for me, I still feel like I'm wearing so little makeup. It's just, a, it was so easy. I think that that was what it was, it just felt like I invested no time and really not much energy in it, which is, that is how I measure whether or not I like a product, right? Is whether it was easy and fun to use. And like, that was easy and fun. It was fun because it was easy and it was easy because it was fun. So, Filmstar Bronze and Glow. And I have a, an Angie Hot and Flashy A507 here. And that's just how we do it usually. And I know that like most people probably wouldn't even notice what I'm doing right now, but it makes all the difference in the world to me. All right, let's give it a spritz. YSL. It's a brand that I have been slowly investing in as things have sparked my interest and all of the interest that has been sparked has been very sincere. I've kind of bought things one at a time as they've come out because I'm just like, well, that's neat. You know what I mean? And then I just kind of found myself with a bunch of YSL stuff. I did kind of complete the full face experience by going into Sephora the other day when I was getting the Sephora collection. So I was like, yeah, let's do that. You know, I've been interested in trying like the new tint and stuff like that for a while. And so it was a good opportunity to do that with my 20% off. So, you know, that was incentive, but this was another brand that I really needed to do a deep dive on. And I'm really glad that I did because this, I mean that the main thing that I would say here is how easy that was. 
It was so easy. Like, do I think all these things like go together perfectly? Not necessarily. Like, this isn't like my perfect face of makeup. I think that like the new, the tint and the cheek balm or whatever, they are specifically a different kind of sub brand and they behave like a different sub brand. Like they have like much more of like a no makeup makeup vibe to them. Whereas like obviously this lipstick and this eyeshadow quad are a lot more like obviously makeup. They're not trying to shy away from the fact that you have makeup on, but A, all the formulas are ridiculously easy to use. B, as a packaging snob, yes. Like yes, yes, yes on the packaging. It's so is satisfying. This is weighted. It is definitely weighted for sure. It's not the heaviest thing in the world. I wouldn't want it to be like, it's not going to like, you know, knock somebody out if you hit them with it, but it's definitely got some weight to it in a nice way. And the other ones, the, the, the new line, you can tell these are different. You know what I mean? They're nice. They are, they're heavy, they're whatever, but they're not, you know, gilded. They didn't try and make this look like a handbag or jewelry or something. It looks like normal makeup and it's priced as such. You know, these are not wildly expensive. They're not cheap, cheap, but they're not as wildly expensive as like a $45 lipstick, for example, or like a $68 eyeshadow quad. So I feel like there is a difference obviously between the two, like the lines kind of like Dior versus Dior backstage kind of thing. They still go together well enough and I'm going to use both kind of interchangeably. It's kind of awesome to know that this, like no matter how much of this I put on, it's always going to look incredibly natural and be super, super easy and forgiving. And it's also super nice to know that like these colors, I know I didn't apply this lipstick today, I applied one of them. All of these colors are so intuitive and the formulas are so beautiful that like, even though they are more made up looking, and so it's like slightly higher stakes in that sense, still, there are lots of formulas in my collection that just make me work a lot harder than that, okay? These colors make sense and the formulas are super easy to work with. My, like, my skin, well, my skin is okay. My lips are in really bad shape right now and, like, the fact that that lipstick makes me look like they're not in bad shape is fantastic. And an eyeshadow quad for all of what I think should be, like, intuitive simplicity and, like, conceiving of an eyeshadow quad, very few of them that I have experienced kind of hit all the marks for me and this was just wildly easy to use like wildly satisfying so beautiful someone commented recently to stop using the word word wildly so much and I think that person needs to get a hobby there are bigger things in the world okay I am trying to avoid saying the word crazy okay like wildly is a nice even keeled word where I'm not leveraging insanity in my regular lexicon so you can watch somebody else anyway this is all the marks for me I love the packaging, I love the color story, I loved working with it, I love the look that I achieved, and it is something that like stands out to me because I have had so much disappointment <laughs> with so many other like really expensive eyeshadow quads just kind of overcomplicating the issue. But, like I, I, I didn't think it was this, like it doesn't need to be this complicated. They have really done something beautiful and simple here. So I love this and it's got this nice kind of, I don't know, I don't think it's real leather, but it's, it's squishy. <laughs> like it's actually like, you know, quilted. It's just, I don't know. It's the little things, but I would say that, yeah, the only real like note that I have is that they are two different makeup lines and very distinctly different in their ideas. You know, it's not that one is like a cheaper version. It's like that the, the new line is a different vibe. You know, it's like a no makeup makeup vibe in a really, really lovely way. And then the other stuff is not, and you get the full luxury experience. Like I'm not worried about paying for a luxury experience if I'm getting a luxury experience and these give me the luxury experience. And the Lash Clash is just freaking gorgeous. So anyway, I hope this was fun for y'all. Like we have just really, like, I think a lot of times I come out of the Sephora sale and I've done like a, you know, a deep dive on a brand or I've done like a massive haul and I end up like returning things. I'm like, yikes, you know, there's a reason that I didn't try this earlier or something like that, but I have had great luck. And if this is all wildly expensive to you, yes, wildly expensive, Tammy, I invite you to watch my last video, which was a deep dive on the Sephora collection, which is the most affordable stuff that's at Sephora. And spoiler, it went well. <laughs> Any hoodles, y'all. I hope this was fun. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You still have time to shop the Sephora sale, I think, as of this coming out. So, like, hopefully you can get your discount if this is something that you're interested in. Time is of the of the essence, but if you have not yet subscribed, it's my first video you're watching or you just haven't decided to subscribe yet, cool people subscribe, subscribe if you're cool. It would be very cool if you did. I will put a video up here that I think that you are going to enjoy if you liked this one. 
I love y'all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Right.